Before we start this podcast, I just wanted to say thank you to Dr. Katie Kennedy for making me aware of the research at Portsmouth University. Now, Katie has been on the show before, and if you go back to episode 44, she talks about the emotional ties in running. Anyhow, after a bit of hesitation, as I thought I would be a bit odd me interviewing one of the researchers about sports bras, I thought, why not? Katie told me that it was a subject that comes up a lot when she's talking to other women about getting into running. I'm most grateful that Professor Joanna wakefield Skur, the head of the research, agreed that I could interview one of her team. Now, as is normal, I have split the podcast into two. The first part, we discuss the nuances of the research and some of the technology behind it. In the second part, Dr. Nicola Rimwick discusses the five key areas that women should think about before purchasing a sports bra. So without further ado, let's get into the podcast. So you're thinking about running, but not sure how to take the first step. My name is Brian Patterson, and I'm here to help. Welcome to Brian's Rompod. Well, welcome back to Brian's Rompod, and it's me, Brian Patterson. I'm your host, and today I'm really excited to have a real special guest onto the show today. And um, we're going to be talking to Dr. Nicola Renwick, who is part of a team doing research into breast health at Portsmouth University. They're using their expertise to in breast my biomechanics to improve scientific knowledge of breast health. Now, you might be asking us to why we're we covering this on a running podcast, which just so happens that. Part of their research is into sports bras, and they're doing this in collaboration with the English, English Institute of Sport and British Olympic Association. So obviously within an Olympic year, very important. And in order to deliver the breast and bra education, bra fittings for some of Britain's top female athletes. No doubt their research will then find its way to manufacturers of sports bras. So if you'd like to give a warm Brian's Rumpod welcome to... Nicola, welcome. How are you Hi, today? Brian. How are you today? Yeah, good. good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Great. I thought I'd sort of go go into sort of the beginning in terms of the history of of the sports bra. And I was listening to a sort of BBC podcast earlier on today where they interviewed Lisa Lundahl. And I do share, I am share something in common with her because I'm, She's epileptic, and so I'm not that is uh, an issue anymore. But maybe that's something that for another podcast, whatever. But I know it was a, it was an, it was a problem that she had because she liked to run and she found it quite uncomfortable at the time. And it was interesting that they came across the solution quite by accident in terms of that. I think she was in her partner, a sort of for a joke, put a jock strap over his head and then <laughs> suddenly they thought mm, maybe that was the eureka movement movement so and they kind of from there it kind of developed that was that was quite interesting so but what i was quite interested to find out is that how come university of sports you know of portsmouth decided to you know go into this type of research yeah so i think that all goes on to kind of the head of our research group who's yeah. um, professor joanna wakefield scar so she talked about it herself in the past that she's experienced, you know, discomfort and pain when she's exercising and and running, and that it is getting that it gets in the way of you know preventing yeah. you from exercising and moving in the way that you want to. And actually, a lot of women experience this. Mm. But then, when you go to if you report to your GP, your doctor about it, there's not really a lot of options for it mm. in terms of exercise induced breast pain. So that kind of inspired her as a sports scientist and biomechanist to really yeah. kind of delve into it. Yeah, I think historically and still right now within sports science, women aren't typically studied as much as men and their bodies. So it's kind of it. Yeah, it's it was there. Were, there was not much of a starting point. So she kind of had this whole kind of pool to just go into and kind of start from scratch. And she's built up this amazing research group that we have now. 
where we cover all aspects of breast health, but including uh, the area that I'm really interested in, which is breast biomechanics, which I specialise in. From from those early days, as I kind of just mentioned that about the, I think it was called the jock bra, you know, it's sort of quite a crude name at that time, had to to now, when you started the research, had kind of, had it moved on much or was it kind of quite stagnant over the last 20 years in terms of sort of, you know, bra biomechanics and, and, and breast health? I would say it was developing, but whether that was evidence-based, I would say maybe not as much as it is now. Currently, the sports bra market is accelerating at a massive rate in, in the sports apparel world. And again, I think it's as more and more women are kind of almost like not almost like breaking the taboo and they're educated themselves and you know breast pain isn't necessarily normal when I'm running and Mm. when I'm exercising and that's kind of created this market and we're lucky enough to kind of work alongside some of these companies to help provide evidence-based um sports bras for their customers and and do you think because technology has moved on quite a bit you know in terms of I mean I've seen you know on your website that you're able to provide a much more definitive research for in producing, you know, the the the, the right kind of, you know, sports bras for from one of a better word. So, you know, it's kind of your 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 much you can be much more detailed with the research. Yeah, and I think we still it it's still every time we kind of do a bit of research, it almost opens up another avenue of questions because it's such an, an untapped area still to this day so we're continuing to develop that and whether that's in you know technologies in order to be able to measure things that we're interested in and doing different types of testing or whether that's just in the type of analysis we do of the data that we collect it's still very much kind of and I wouldn't say in its early days but it's definitely not fully established and we are continuing to push that and advance that as much as we can within our research I know we talked, and I know you're something that you kind of wanted to, and you kind of highlighted is that how that a poor fitting bra can make have an impact on performance. Can you sort of talk about that? Yeah. So I think so. When we think of sports bras, there's different ones on the market, and a lot of people, women will complain of it being uncomfortable, which is often a sign of it not being the right fit. And a lot of breast pain is related to kind of excess movement of the breast during physical activity. So if you're wearing a poorly fitted bra or a bra that's not the right level of support, that then does impact your performance. So we've seen that exercise in general in itself will feel harder. And in terms of running, we see that your ground reaction forces, so how hard you hit the ground, that actually increases. So if you're wearing a low support bra for the activity that you're doing, that can then, you know, lead to impacting on your feet and your knees as you're doing it and causing more bodily problems, rather not just pain in your breast, but potentially other body parts as well. So it's like a Um, chain reaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah, It is one of those things. It's like everything in the body is connected and it's exactly the same with breasts. We also see an increase in your upper body muscle activity. And when running, we've actually seen in studies a restricted upper body running profile. So that's kind of what we think is from very much from people trying to, in order to stop the movement of their breasts while they're running and to control, they're almost like stiffening their muscles and stiffening their upper body in order to kind of stop that excessive breast motion that's causing them pain. And then on top of that as well, there's a whole list of, a whole list of things that we've, we've seen with it. We've seen that breathing frequency can decrease. So you breathe less regularly when you're wearing a low support bra. And then your stride length is also decreased. So you're actually, again, it's that trying to prevent that excessive breast movement. So you're taking shorter steps almost to compensate for that movement. And also mentally that you kind of discouraged and may not want to participate. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is that barrier. It's and we have we have seen from surveys that we've done that women report breasts as a barrier to physical activity, and that excessive breast movement is down to it. And it is it's it's almost like you say like you'd 
you're prevented from doing it just because you 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 think, oh, I'm going to go into it and I'm going to be in pain. I'm not going to be able to do it properly. And yeah, it is a shame that, that that's the case. And I'd say as well that this affects all women of every level of activity. You know, right. from recreational youth runners, from people just getting getting into exercise for the first time, and even elite athletes. And um, like you said, we've worked with them. Professional athletes, we've worked with Team GB athletes and we've worked with the Women's Football Association with the Lionesses. And yeah, I just I always like to put it out there that if you are suffering from breast pain when you're exercising, you're not alone. Yeah. It is happening to a huge amount of people. Is there a kind of like a, because I was just, a thought crossed my mind is that is there like, I mean, obviously if you're walking, let's say walking on a treadmill, it's that, you know, because if there is a correlation with speed, it, I mean, is is that something you picked up in research that if you go above a certain speed, then the the movement, you know, is 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 going to be greater, sort of thing. Yeah, so it does. We do see that in terms of when we see breast movement, it increases as speed increases with running, and it does get to a point where it kind of plateaus, so around about between 10, 10 and twelve kilometers an hour. Right. It does kind of plateau, and that basically is like the breast skin, which is the main supporting structure of the breast, almost reaches its limit. So it's kind of moving it, and it, it can't actually move any further. So from that point, in terms of the amount of breast displacement we see, it does plateau around about there. Yeah. And then you also have to consider potentially other activities as well, physical activities. I know this is a running podcast, but if anyone, yeah. no, no, any no, of your no, listeners no. do other activities as well. It might be that you need a different bra for your different kinds of activities that you're doing. Yeah. So even, you know, something like golf or tennis, your torso's moving in a very different way, which yeah. is going to move your breasts in a very different way to when you're running. So you might need a different kind of bra and a, a different kind of support for that type of movement. So when you were starting off doing the research, were there sort of certain things, you know, that you were kind of right, you know, there's 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 breast pain, there's movement, and there kind of, and there were certain boxes that you wanted to tick, and you wanted to solve, or you wanted to research into. Is that you how you kind of approached it? Yeah, I think I think I think the first kind of step was kind of understanding how the breast moves and what is that movement, and then looking to see, okay, so we put a bra on, how does that then change how the breast is moving, and then how do we then from that go to understanding so what is a good change so what is that change and and that's in terms of reducing the amount of breast displacement and we have this measure which is called breast movement reduction which we use in our commercial testing unit which measures the level of support that a bra can provide so we have that and that looks using breast displacement and then we're also interested as well in terms of the when we do our testing we get the participants to fill out a survey a questionnaire for us afterwards after they've completed it to let us know how they felt in the bra in terms of pain and comfort support so we're interested in that and then linking that back to maybe design features that we might have within the bra mm. and and again i was just looking i mean i it was really quite interesting how it looks like some kind of motion graphics like you're doing it for a video game but I suppose it was a very similar type of way or how you did it in terms of doing the research because you had someone on a, on a treadmill and you had these kind of, you know, dots which were on, you know, all around their body. That, that must have been quite interesting in doing that. Is that how, how did that take? Yeah, so that we use as a motion capture software yeah. and hardware. And it is the exact same type of equipment that they use in Hollywood to make your kind of big blockbuster films with all your... <laughs> Um, CGI effects. It's the same little dots. It's the same camera. Or video games, for instance. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. they are. They're the. It's the exact same. The exact same kit. We just use it to analyze how the body moves, and this is kind of really common in biomechanics. So yeah, we have the sensors, and we place them on the areas of the body that we're interested in looking at, and then we record that, and then we have a software data software platform that we kind of put this through and it helps us analyze the data in order to output yeah body movements so we can look at all different parts of the body looking at that and how does how does that help you with 
with the research. So obviously you've you've got all this data and about the the movements, and it's going to obviously it's going to be vary from individual to individual, isn't it? So how how do you kind of help? How does it help you in terms of doing the research? Yeah, so it allows us to make sure that our our research is all kind of from people and from their experience. So it's not kind of predicted. It's all actual data. So it's all how it's actually moving. Mm. And like you said, everybody is different. So we, we you know, we'll take a, a large group of people and do it in order to kind of get the average of a group. But then also you kind of get some people who are different and that is really interesting to delve into them to see yeah. what's going on with them that's different. So it is really great and it, it allows us to just get a really good image of, you, especially from going from, you know, different bras and different levels of support. Yeah. You know, see straight away when you get your graph output, you can see straight away what that bra is doing to change the movement of the breast. And do you, the, is there a, obviously, you know, different sizes, then there's going to be greater movement. Obviously, if you are of a, you know, of, of a smaller size, you're not going. I mean, I'm assuming that you're not going to be suffering as much. Is is that the case, or do they have? I mean, you know, that isn't that is an assumption. But would they have? You know, they may be other different issues. Did you find that yeah. from your data? Yeah. So we do typically see women who have larger breasts have kind of more more breast pain when exercising. But that's not to say uh, women with smaller breasts. Ex- mm. don't experience it they very much do but it can be just a very individual kind of basis and from that as well it could be down to their sports bras not fitting properly so and the type of sports bra that they wear as well so a woman with smaller breasts would be recommended to wear a different type of sports bra compared to a woman with larger breasts mm. and when you went into this research were did you have some assumptions and and then when you were doing the research did you feel that you learned something that really that kind of surprised you coming out of it from the from the data that you got I mean was that I said oh I didn't even think about that or I didn't realize that was something you learned from doing you know all this motion capture yeah so yeah so I I myself did a study last year from from our data set and we were looking to see if so I talked about our measure of support <coughs> that we had, the, mm-hmm. the breast movement reduction, which is our measure, how we measure how supportive a bra is, uh, mm-hmm. from the questionnaire data from the participants, supported they rated the bra that they were wearing. And we thought we'd see a nice correlation where, you know, if it's a high support bra, they will be able to, you know, perceive that it is giving them that support. And if it's a loading <laughs> bra, they'll be able to say, you know, that's that not supportive. But actually, when we ran the data and looked at that relationship, we actually saw that women aren't very good at being able to tell how supportive a sports bra is. Oh, right. So that was quite interesting. So that kind of really highlighted to us in terms of it's really important. So we have a way to to measure how supportive a bra is, but it's really important then for, you know, the brands and the companies who are selling the product to really market, market it, sorry, you know if it's a high support bra or if it's a medium support, so support this, bra so, is, so it's also about educating the individual as yeah. well yeah yeah definitely so that you you they know what bra to go out and buy if they're looking for a high support bra because mm. they can't just putting it on in the store and they might they can't necessarily tell right what, what support that's going to give them so i thought that was quite interesting right yeah and do you think not going sort of for the tangent whatever but do you think that the companies now because they offer bras of a particular size and it is the same size but then no one has same size breasts so i mean they're not custom built as it were so is there do you think the companies now kind of take on, are able to take on board a more custom built sports bra yeah i think in terms of that i think what we're seeing and this kind of came out i'm not saying it's fully influenced by the work that we did yeah we did a research paper a few years ago which looked at the characteristics of a high support sports bra so we looked at lots of different design features Mm. 
and ran some statistical analyses on them to determine which of those were most closely associated with being a high support sports bra. Mm. And two of the two of the big ones on those were underband adjustability and strap adjustability as well. Right. So I think that is where you're getting to see more sports bras on the market that do have these adjustable elements. So that it is kind of not tailored on a person by person basis, but it is you are allowed to be able to put it on and adjust it to your body as best you can. So it can be more, you know, because sometimes you get some women who complain that obviously, you know, that, you know, obviously one breast might be bigger than the other. And then, you know, it can be, you know, I'm not getting the right product for, you know, for my, for myself. But from what you're saying is that companies are becoming to make it more adjustable so it can fit, you know, be more custom made for themselves. So. Is that right? Yeah, I'd say that is, yeah. Yeah, I would say, yeah, we definitely see that a lot more in those two components. So, yeah. Has the has the material over the years, in terms of the the material to make the, the sports, sports bra, has that got better? So, you know, yeah. So there's, again, that's like an area that's really kind of developing and um, looking at different materials for support bras so for sports bras again from the paper that we did we looked at i think it compares nylon and polyester and right. i think nylon nylon came out on top compared to polyester in terms of a high support sports bra but there are lots of advances in material science at the moment there's even i think there's a research a research paper published out from a group in australia looking at the bionic bra all right and with, <laughs> which had materials that had like elect- they're called electro materials. So they have all these kind of electronic properties in order to sense changes in breast movement. And oh, right, so it, in real time. Yeah, well. so yeah. it can sense how, almost like how how the material then needs to respond to what the breast is move it, uh, doing. So these kind of ideas are out there and they're being developed and they're yes. still kind of, yeah, it's a really interesting field actually in some material. But it's kind of like at a, a prototype level i suppose yeah 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 yeah, yeah. concept right. levels and yeah like i said it's kind of really it's it's a field that is developing right. quite quickly so moving on to so when you i mean i just probably is the is your research still ongoing or is have you come up with kind of a template or you know a set of thing guidelines you know for women you know, if they are looking to buy a sports bra or is there some guide in the guidelines that you can pass on to the manufacturers? I mean, what, what would you say they are? Yeah, so we have our, there. The, so these were, in terms of bra fit, we have five steps. And again, right. this was this was from work done by a group out in Australia. And these are steps that we use that look at five components of the bra to check fit of the bra and that's what's really important for if you've got a sports bra if, if you don't have the right fit then the, it won't be able to function properly and do its job the way it's meant to and in terms of kind of I guess in terms of my research and side of in terms of biomechanics and kind of pushing forward in design like I said earlier it's still you know I feel we're still scratching the surface with what we understand really? yeah about breast movement and we do have some standard practice that we have in place that we apply within our commercial testing unit. And so we have a lot of um, laundry brands and sports apparel brands. They pay us to test their products basically for them. And we have a set package and a set way of doing that. So that's standardized across all the companies. And that looks at the breast movement reduction. So, mm. Mm. which I discussed earlier. Yeah. And yeah, but in terms of the research side of things, yeah, scratching the surface, we're really diving deep into. And that's a wrap for another exhilarating episode of Brian's Run Pod. Thanks for tuning in, folks. As always, we've got your back with all things running. And next week, get ready for some awesome beginner hints and tips to kickstart your running journey. Oh, and before we sign off, exciting news. We're now available on YouTube. So whether you're pounding the pavement or chilling at home, you can catch us there too. Hey, if you want to keep up with the latest updates, behind the scenes fun and even some exclusive t- content, make sure to follow me on social media. You can find me on Twitter or should I say X at Brian's Rompod. We've also just launched a shiny new Facebook page. Simply search for Brian's Rompod and give us a like 
And don't forget to hop on over to Instagram where you can catch all our visual adventures at Brian's Rompod. For those of you who love diving deep into the episodes, head over to our website, www.brianesrompod.co.uk. And there you'll find detailed show notes, handy chapter markers, make it too easy to navigate through our favourite discussions. Please leave a review as it will always help find peel others find this podcast. Music is by Happy Days by Stock Audio, not forgetting artwork by Alice Patterson. Till next week, thanks again for listening. 